Hello my people, I hope we're doing well. Uh, this is our third video on Law of Signs. Uh, in the last video, I introduced you to what was called the ambiguous case, which um, can sometimes, uh, which is basically presented when we have side-side angle, okay? Uh, in this case, we do have side-side angle, so let's go ahead and draw our triangle and figure out uh, which of those scenarios is going on here. Uh, I'll try to draw it at least a close to uh, uh, close to uh, scale. So if this is angle A, right, this is 30 degrees. B has to be its adjacent. A is 10. Wow, that's small considering, considering the value of B. So let's go ahead and drop that altitude. I suspect it's not going to be long enough, but let's go ahead and just double check. I know that sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to h over 40, or h is equal to 40 sine 30 degrees. Now sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so that's 20. That means that this altitude is 20 units long. A is half that. So the best that A is going to be able to do is make it maybe halfway down, right, and just kind of sit there dangling. Well, that doesn't make a triangle, okay? And so, no triangle, it doesn't exist, okay? The scenario, the scenario that they have, that they have shared with us, that they have given to us, uh, doesn't give us, doesn't give us an actual triangle. Now, uh, the thing is, is that we can sometimes get so fixated on the ambiguous case that we fail to recognize uh, any other possibilities for the use of the law of signs. In this case, uh, what happens is I have uh, angle angle side or side angle angle, uh, and that and and that means that I really yeah I mean I don't have to I don't have to uh, gosh stumbling over my words. I don't have to look for the ambiguous case because this necessarily exists. All right, uh, so we'll go ahead and cross out that second triangle. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just draw a generic triangle despite the fact that this is going to be an obtuse triangle. Um, because I mean, it's, it's, a, it's obtuse because these two together make 81, right? And so the other the other angle is 99, which is greater than a right angle. Uh, so, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and draw it at least a little bit to scale. Um, let's go ahead and draw it like this. And then instead of straight up and down, I'll veer it off just a little bit. Okay, and um, I do love the smudges that I get with gel pens. All right. This is going to be angle A, which as I said before is 99 degrees. This is side A. We'll call this angle C, and it is of course 39 degrees. And this is angle B, which is 42 degrees. Now C is 18, that's opposite angle C, but I still also need to find B. Let's go ahead and take the information that we already have and just go ahead and plug it in down here. And uh, C is 18. Well, the fact that it's not side-side angle and there's no ambiguous case, this should be an extremely easy problem. It should be really, really straightforward. Uh, we should basically be looking for A and B. So if I'm looking for A, and I'm looking for B, and I have a complete ratio for C, okay, then I can set them both up like this, and B needs to be sine of 42 degrees, and A needs to be uh, sine of 99 degrees, and then basically I need to say, well, A is equal to uh, 18, over sine 39 degrees times sine of 99 degrees and B is equal to that same ratio uh, and if I want to make it easier on myself it's not too much easier but uh, I can go ahead and find that 18 over sine 39 in my calculator 
and use just basically use that ratio uh, in both of these calculations. Not that that really saves me a whole lot of time, uh, but I definitely am going to multiply it by sine of 99, and then I'm going to multiply it by uh, sine of 42, and I'm going to get an A value uh, of approximately 28.250 and a B value of 19.139. Uh, and that makes sense with the value that we already know. 39 and 42 are really close to each other in angle measurement size and therefore 18 and 19 0.139 are pretty close too, but 99 degrees is pretty pretty large compared to those two, and therefore it will have a significantly larger opposite side, being 28.250. All right, let's go ahead and run through. Uh, let's do about two more problems, and then um, we're going to get to the last piece of this section, which is there is a corresponding area formula. Uh, for oblique triangles uh, using sine. Now, let's solve this triangle. A is 61 degrees, side A is 8, and B is 21. Okay, well, here's the thing. That is side-side angle, so let's go ahead and set it up. Okay, so I have that 61 degrees, that's A. Now B is 21, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this altitude. A is eight, that's, that's cutting it kinda close. Uh, we'll, let's see whether it actually, it actually does have no solutions, whether it dangles or whether uh, it is actually going to accomplish the feat of completing that triangle. Now. I see the fact that H is 12 sine of 61, and that gives me a value of 18.367. Okay, well here's the thing. Does, does this make sense? Does it make sense for this to be pretty close to 21? And the answer is yes, okay? because uh, sine of 61 is really close to sine of 60 degrees, and sine of 60 degrees is like 0.866. Uh, so this is even closer to 0.9. If you're gonna take 21 and multiply it by about 0.9, you're gonna get something like 18.367. Now we notice that A is not even half that. So if A is not even half that, we get no triangle, okay? All right, let's do one last one. And this is, again, angle, angle, side, so we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case. Yay! Let's go ahead and plug this information in. We'll X that out. Okay, now together, this is 120 and 45. That's 165. That only leaves 15 degrees for angle C. And that's opposite 16, which means these two, like B is gonna be larger and the and side A is going to be significantly larger. Uh, but I, I basically just have to set up two proportions such that I can solve for A and B. And, and since there's no ambiguous case, this ought to be really, really straightforward. So we're looking for A, we put it over sine of angle A and then we set it equal to this full ratio that we have down here, 16 over sine of 15 degrees. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for B. B over sine of angle B is equal to C, which I wrote C, but I should be writing 16, over sine of 15 degrees, okay? So A is equal to 16 sine 120 degrees over sine of 15 degrees, and B is equal to 16 sine 45 degrees over sine of 15 degrees. Uh, now, unfortunately, sine of 15 degrees kind of mucks it up, and you can't you can't really get a uh, uh, you can't really I mean 
you could. I mean, you know how to sign with the sum and difference identities how to sign how to find sine of 15 degrees. That's pi over 12. Uh, and these two are, of course, unit circle values, but we're not really interested in that. We're worried about decimal approximations here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have A at 16 sine 120 over sine of 15 degrees. And again, we have 16 sine 45 degrees over sine of 15 degrees. Okay. And so sine of 45 degrees is going to be, or this B value is 43.713. And this A value is 53.537. So, uh, sorry, that's 43.713 and 53.537. And that is your triangle. Um, law of sines, like I said, is, and as a formula, it's not extremely powerful. I mean, it does really only cut out like one or two steps. It cuts out the dropping, it cuts out the dropping of the altitude and then solving for your H value two different ways and then setting those things equal to each other. So uh, it cuts out the, the necessary substitution because the substitution is there in the formulating of, of the of the formula uh, but it it is helpful okay and and as formulas go it's extremely easy to memorize uh, so it winds up being it winds up being you know great formulas that have limited use and are difficult to memorize like a lot of the identities in 5.5 that I didn't have you memorize we don't, right? We just kind of know where to find them if we if we happen to be in need of them. Um, this is uh, that's basically it for the law of sines. In the next video, I'm going to introduce an area formula, do a couple of problems, uh, and then I will uh, post these and post an assignment. And we'll look forward to chatting about law of sines for those that uh, are able to show up to online class tomorrow. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please do uh, shoot me an email or a chat message and I will, uh, I will answer it uh, as soon as I can. Bye.